I'm very happy to be here. Me, Eric Engwall, I'm the chief physicist of RaySearch, and I'm together here with Nick Schroeder, the chief scientific officer of Leo Cancer Care. We will talk about advancing gantrolase ARP therapy. So, before we start that, advancing the, the gantrolase ARP therapy, that's something we together truly believe in, but maybe we should take a step back and watch in the rear mirror, see how this has evolved in the field over the years. So this is not really like the modern technology, this is 70 years ago, how we started. And with the photons, we need to do something else than just shooting in one direction. So we started to add more directions to get a better dose distribution. And then we're adding more and more angles we're starting to modulate, going with IMRT, and then eventually we start to rotate, and we have the ARC treatments. And uh, as you know, we have a lot of fantastic machines that can actually achieve this. We have the C-Arm Linux, we have the Radexact, the Halcyons, the Vera machines, and many others. Great machines. But all the evolution has happened through Gantry Revolution. Could we think of something else? Of course we could. So going to the sophisticated level, I would propose this solution. So this is the phaser machine from Stanford, where you have 16 Linux with spot scan photons. This is a fantastic machine, especially if you go for flash treatments. But on the other hand, we could do something much simpler, of course. And that is by rotating the chair and having a fixed beam. This can really be something simple that brings radiotherapy to more people. And especially now when we look into proton arcs, ion arcs, look at this difference from ray station. So this is a 100 ton gantry revolving around the patient. And how do you compare that to the chair? rotating and you have the beam. So this looks as the same size, uh, but all of us know that the chair is much smaller and, and would fit into that gantry. So the choice is quite natural, right? At Research, we have been doing treatment planning for over 20 years, and we have a lot of experience on that, but with a patient lying down most of the time. What's happening now is, of course, that we just rotate the patient and then start to rotate it around the chair. And the question now is, is this complicated to do this change? Yes, it's complicated in one sense, and no. So it's a twofold answer. Yes, because we have to do all the different transformations to come there, and that's actually more complicated than you might think. But you can handle it. And we need the interoperability between the machines. All of this needs to be handled, and we can do it. It's just about bookkeeping, so it's simple. And it's really not complicated in terms of treatment planning, because we already have all the planning tools, we have the optimization algorithms, we have the dose computation, and all the contouring that we can bring already from before. So if we look into this machine uh, that we plan for in RayStation, that's the Leo Ruby machine, with a very fast MLC that is possible due to having a stationary beam, much faster motors, so you can have a higher modulation. And then comparing this Ruby single arc to a conventional Linux dual arc with a normal, actual dual layer MLC, we get similar time to uh, do the treatment uh, delivery since this uh, conventional linear can rotate quite fast, but still with this very smooth rotation of six degrees per second and this very fast MLC, we get similar dose distributions, which can also be seen in the DVH here. So we don't really need to compromise when going to the chair. And that is the same when we go for protons. So this is the proton arc therapy. 
We have here a study from the University Medical Center in Groningen in the Netherlands, where you see up in the left the VMAT plan, and then going to IMPT, you get better treatments. And once more coming to the proton arcs, even better. That is then translated in better outcomes in NTCP, which is shown below. All this can be done with the proton arc technology. One way to do it is the discrete arc, where you rotate, stop, and show your protons, and then continue. But everything contained in one beam, so it will be a fast delivery. We also have the possibility to do this as a dynamic arc, so that you rotate your gantry or rotate the patient while delivering the protons. So this will be a very efficient and, and fast way to deliver. So we have seen proofs of this technology being much better in terms of dosimetry and outcomes in treatment planning studies. All of that has been done with gantries, actually. So we have this paper that was shown before, and we have many others showing that we have better dosimetric outcomes with, with proton therapy. But the good thing is that all these algorithms and the results, as long as it's coplanar beams, they will not change if the patient rotates instead. So if we want to go to, for proton arc therapy, this is really the natural choice. And what is even more interesting is that the first publication on proton arcs was actually made on a rotating phantom. So, so this was the first idea how to do it. So why should we rotate the gantry? That's the question. Another great thing with the proton arcs is that you can get the improved LET distribution. To the left, you see an IMPT plan uh, with the dose and then the LET. And, and you can clearly see some end of range effects where you get high LET in the brainstem, which can lead to higher toxicities. Now what we will do in, in uh, Ray Station 2023B, which is launched in June, is that we have the LET optimization. That works for normal IMPT beams, but what is good is that proton arcs is much more usable together with LET optimization. And here we can truly remove all the high LET from the brainstem. So, so that's really great addition. So we look forward to this merger in the next release of Ray Station, having the proton arcs. We have the LET that will make the perfect combination. And of course, doing that together with the chair, that's all we want. Next steps would be ions. So carbon ions, if you want to do a carbon arc, helium arc or anything, would you like to rotate these really heavy synchrotron gantries? No, we use the chair. So you understand? I mean, this is really the natural choice. We should go for the chair. Why hasn't this come up before? I, I ask you, Nick, what, what is unique with your solution? Why haven't we seen such a solution before, since it's just something that everybody would think of? Great. <clears throat> okay, so thanks. Uh, can everybody hear me? Thank you very much, Eric, for this uh, great introduction, and thanks for everybody coming. So I'll only walk you through uh, you know, why we believe that the upright positioner we developed is the ideal apparatus for that. When Leo Cancer Care started, we realized we really have to look at the patient's body in different sections and, and how we're going to develop a patient positioner that can actually allow us to have the patient positioned for upright radiation therapy. I want to point out here, if you can see my slide, that we have discrete areas. The first focus in head and neck area, then the thoracic area and the pelvic area. And uh, we developed this unique device, which is often referred to as a chair, but I prefer the word upright patient positioner that can position the patient in any position between fully standing and fully seated. So this device was developed, and here you can see the two, uh, the two scenarios, the same. Uh, we, of course, have now real photos because this device now exists for more than two years and been tested at the CLB Center in Lyon. So basically here you see the patient in a standing position that we'll use for the pelvic and uh, to the upper lower thoracic area, and then this would be lower thoracic all the way to head and neck. 
So we solved the problem of positioning the patient, and that was the first step. Can we position the patient? Then the, everybody in your must be thinking now, now, that's great, but how are you going to get the anatomical information? How are you going to image the patient? So we then embarked on a full-blown uh, dual energy, 32 slice, large bore helical scanner. And I just want to make sure that everybody takes home that it's not a cone beam CT scanner. This is a dual energy CT scanner that we developed in our uh, offices in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. So here's just a uh, uh, movie, and I see the movie would run of the scanner. It was more than a year ago. You see the scanner is, is fully balanced. There's counterweights that counteract the weight of the, the scan ring. And if this movie want to play, then you can see the scanner will start scanning, spinning. And uh, as it goes up, uh, one thing I have to point out, the scanner will always scan perpendicular to the backrest. If the patient's not fully upright, which would probably never be the case, then we tilt the scanner around this uh, horizontal axis so that the scan is always perpendicular to the backrest. That means we totally maintain the DICOM standard, the DICOM uh, uh, coordinate systems. And we already, what you see here is a scan of a thoracic phantom imported into Ray Station, making a treatment plan. And this was uh, version 10A and beyond is already fully compatible to this. Now, why would this machine be the ideal apparatus for arc therapy? And I want to point out here, the whole patient positioner consists basically out of two components. The first component is to keep the patient posture, to get the patient in a certain posture. That means standing or seated. And the second one would be to move that patient once in a certain posture into the treatment position and into different positions for different treatment beams. So this is unique. We have a, uh, the backrest. The backrest actually is removable. You can pull the backrest out. You put a different backrest in for different types of disease site treatments. The seat height is adjustable over 500 millimeters to accommodate different body lengths. The seat pan is uh, what you would tilt to, to convert the machine from a seated position to a semi-standing position. And very, very important is the shin rest that we use to block the patient's knees. Everybody that was involved in traditional seated treatments would say that as soon as the patient get tired, the patient slide and the altitude of the patient's head would change. So this stops it and we also have a heel rest that stops the heels of the patient. So a fundamental principle here is for every upright treatment, we immobilize the patient from the heels to the knees, to the bottom, to the pelvis, to the back, to the uh, abdominal space and in head and neck. So it's far, far stronger immobilization than we'd ever done in the supine uh, treatment. Now, once the patient posture is retained in the position, I should have said all these parameters are recorded. Once you simulate the patient, these things get recorded for the next use the next day. Now we have also the, the ability to move the, uh, to raise the platform out of the floor by 700 millimeters. We can go left and right, we can go forward, backward, we can pitch and roll around the ISO center, and we have a rotation, and that's the movement that's of extreme importance for this discussion. This rotation, uh, all the rotations, of course, is around the ISO center, but this main uh, vertical rotation is continuous. The machine sits on a slip ring, and that means we can continuously rotate in one direction. But I will just walk you through a couple of the fundamental aspects of the Leo upright positioner. So first of all, this machine rotates on a very large, big bearing at the bottom. So everything you see sits on this massive bearing. It's about 1.5 meter in diameter and give us super, super precise isocentric rotation. I do believe it's probably the most isocentric device ever built in, in history. So here you can see the slip ring, which means we can go continuously in one direction which has huge ramifications in terms of arc therapy. Very important also for a therapy perspective, you never have to go back to zero. You just take the shortest distance to zero. So you're not like when again, three, you go to 180, now if you go back all the way through zero to get to 185, for example. Um, stabilization is done with the scissor, scissor, it's not scissor jacks, it's just scissor stabilizers. When this machine is in its uppermost position, 700 millimeters elevated, you cannot move for the machine. It gives us extreme lateral stability. Um, and then we're using a proprietary vertical lift system. It's not using the scissor jacks to lift it. We've all had experience to try to jack up a car with a scissor jack, and it's not so easy. But there's a unique way of drifting the, the platform up, um, and we can talk a little more about it. The next motion 
is how to do the pitch and roll. And it's all done with the precise motors tilting the entire 60 degree of freedom axis. And then we have uh, the industrial um, CNC machine drive systems to move the machine to the left and the right. So again, just to iterate, we have uh, these parameters, the seat height, the seat pan angle, chin rest to govern the patient posture, supported by uh, vac -log bags. And then once the patient's in position, here you can see Dr. Vincent Gregoire, other of you probably know him. He's been using this machine since February 2021 to uh, experiment and play around with immobilization devices and, and measuring a patient reproducibility based on external anatomy. So once you have the posture in place, the six degree of freedom system will allow you to move. Now back to the combination of the CT scanner and the patient positioner, it's good to know that the beam axis would be here at a certain, let's say 1.25 meter height. The vertical rotation axis intersects with the beam. The tilt axis of the CT scanner intersects with that beam. And so this cartoon here would just then show how it would look like. The patient would rotate to where the arc would start. The beam comes on and you simply rotate uh, around uh, the, the axis. The important message here is whatever we want to treat in this position, we will immobilize the patient such that the area of interest intersects with the beam height. So once you do the CT scan in the treatment position, we want to minimize the translations and movements to get to the treatment position. So I, I hope, this is my last slide. Um, well, let me see here. There is one more slide, just shows the positioner with one of our uh, people in Lyon. You can see how this is a machine, let to see if I can speed it up here, it would rotate and change in elevation uh, as you as you go around. So it's an extremely precise machine. Uh, please come and, uh, come and look at, at the machine and how this technology would actually combine your CT simulation room with your treatment room and vice versa. So it makes the life of the physicist easy. A lot of people think it's complex. I do believe it's gonna be much simpler. And we also have uh, steps how we would uh, solve the workflow if you start treating every one of your patients with arc therapy and you go start uh, less fraction, uh, uh, hypofractionation. So. so thank you very much for your time and uh, we'd love to even welcome any questions over at the booth.